Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Weekly Report. Trump foreign policy, doing the same thing and expecting a different result. After a week of insisting that a meeting with Putin on the sidelines of the G20 meeting in Argentina was going to happen, President Trump at the last minute sent out a tweet explaining that due to a Russia-Ukraine dispute in the Sea of Azov, he would no longer be willing to meet his Russian counterpart. According to Trump, the meeting had to be canceled because the Russians seized three Ukrainian naval vessels in Russian waters that refused to follow instructions from the Russian military. But as Pat Buchanan wrote in a recent column, how is this little dispute thousands of miles away any of our business? Unfortunately, it is our business because of President Obama's foolish idea to overthrow a democratically elected pro-Russia government in Ukraine in favor of what his administration believed would be a pro-Western and pro-NATO replacement. In short, the Obama administration did openly to Ukraine what his Democratic Party claims without proof the Russians did to the United States meddled in a vote. U.S. interventionism in Ukraine led to the 2014 coup and many dead Ukrainians. Crimea's majority Russian population held a referendum and decided to rejoin Russia rather than remain in a pro-West Ukraine that immediately began discriminating against them. Why would anyone object to people opting out of abusive relationships? What is more disappointing about President Trump's foreign policy is that it didn't have to be this way. He ran on a platform of America first, ending foreign wars, NATO skepticism, and better relations with Russia. Americans voted for this policy. He had a mandate, a rejection of Obama's destructive interventionism, but he lost his nerve. Instead of being the president who ships lethal weapons to the Ukrainian regime, instead of being the president who insists that Crimea remain in Ukraine, instead of being the president who continues policies the American people clearly rejected at the ballot box, Trump could have blamed the Russian-Ukraine mess on the failed Obama foreign policy and charted a very different course. What flags fly over Crimea is none of our business. We are not the policemen of the world, and candidate Trump seems to have understood that. But now, Trump's in a trap. He was foolish enough to believe that Beltway foreign policy experts have a clue about what really is American national interest. Just this week, he told the Washington Post, in a response to three U.S. soldiers being killed by a roadside bomb in Afghanistan, that he has to keep U.S. troops fighting in the longest war in U.S. history because the experts tell him there is no alternative. He said virtually every expert that I have and speak to say if we don't go there, they're going to be fighting us over here. And I've heard it over and over again. That is the same bunkum the neocons sold us as they lied us into Iraq. We've got to fight Saddam over there or he'd soon be in our streets. These experts are worthless, yet for some reason, President Trump cannot break free of them. Well, here's some unsolicited advice to the president. Listen to the people who elected you, who are tired of the U.S. as the world's police force. Let Ukraine and Russia work out their own problems. Give all your experts a pink slip and start over with a real pro-American foreign policy, non-interventionism. Thanks for listening.